Hello and welcome back to the CQC video tutorial series. Uh, before we move forward with um, more configuration of CQC, we're going to take a slight detour and discuss a couple of concepts that you really need to understand before you can get the full benefit of the tutorial that you're about to go through. We can't fully cover this topic here in the, in the tutorial, it's too deep, but um, we'll, we'll give you enough to, to get you going. But before you really dig into CQC, you should read the technical document related to these subjects, which is um, if you go to support on the website and then technical documents, um, there's an action reference guide there and it will get into this stuff in a lot more detail and also some other things that we're going to touch on as we move through the tutorials. And these are very fundamental concepts for CQC and everything effectively builds on them, so you need to understand them pretty well. We've already discussed the concept of uh, device driver. Uh, we've installed one, the device simulator, and, and you understand at this point that every device that you want to control with CQC needs to have a device driver installed, and that device driver allows CQC to talk to that device. And the device driver has a moniker, which uniquely represents it uh, within your home network. So when you see the name of that uh, device driver, you know that that is a specific device and, and hopefully the name that you've given it is descriptive enough that it tells you, you know, what it is. So if you had, for instance, an AV processor in your home theater, you might call it AV proc. And so when you see the, the name AV proc used, you know that you're dealing with that particular device. But we also need to then, then take the concept a step further because we need to be able to address those individual characteristics of the device that we want to be able to either set the value of or get the value of back into CQC so that we can use it in some way. So for instance, in our AV processor example, there would be hopefully a, a volume that could be read and written. And obviously you need to be able to identify that particular characteristic of the device so that you can send the value to it to make it change or to get that value back for display on a screen or to react to in some way in your automation logic. In CQC, uh, those individual characteristics of the device are called fields. So every device driver is composed of a, a set of fields that represent those things about the device that CQC can allow you to either get the value of or set the value of. And sometimes, hopefully, in most cases, that you can both get and set the val you know, those values because it's useful to be able to do both, which is what we would call two-way control. Sometimes it's not always possible. Sometimes not all fields within the device allow them to both be read and written, but uh, usually they're readable and writable, and that's a good thing. Um, so we're going to poke around a little bit here and show you how uh, this would look. If we use this toolbar item here, whose description is browse drivers and fields, which uh, makes sense now, hopefully, in the context of what we dis were discussing, you'll get a, a dialog like this. And at the top, you'll get a list of devices. And this is all the devices that you've got installed anywhere in your network. In our case, we only have one because we've only installed the uh, device simulator. When you select a device up here, you will see down here a list of all of the fields that the device driver provides you and the current value of that field, if that's applicable. In some cases, uh, there is no current value, so here's one here called toggle mute. That's a writable only field because all you're doing is toggling something you're not, um, it's, it's not a value that's readable, it's more of a, an, a command to do than it is a value to read. But if it is readable, then you will have a current value as well. And if we select one, like the volume, which we were discussing earlier, you'll see down here some information. Every field within CQC has a certain amount of information associated with it. The name, which we've already discussed, so uh, that the name volume represents within this device driver that particular uh, characteristic of the device that we want to be able to control called volume. It has a current value. It has a type. In this case, it's a four-byte integer, which means it's a signed value. It can be negative or positive and it has a certain uh, type of access. In this case, it's both readable and writable. And in some cases, they also have some sort of limit. Uh, in this case, it's a range limit, but it's not always a range. There are other types of limits. So in this case, it says that the value can only be from negative 50 to 12. And that can be very important because it tells something like um, a volume knob that you might use on one of your touchscreen interfaces, what the legal range of values are for this field so that it can automatically adjust to it. Uh, some won't have any type of range because they're, they, they don't have any defined range. They uh, either are, uh, unlimited or uh, the device doesn't define any so we don't know what that might be and we, therefore we can't set any sort of limit on it. 
since the volume is both readable and writable, we should be able to change the value here and make it change over in the device simulator. So let's do that. If we select, if we highlight a field and we use the change field um, button here, we'll get a little pop-up. The contents of this pop-up will vary according to the type of field. It'll provide you with some convenient way to set it. Currently, the value is negative 10. And if we look over here in the device simulator, it does show up as negative 10. So let's slide that down. So we'll set negative 19 and press set. And you see over here that the device simulator has now changed to show that it's now negative 19. And if we close this, we'll see that uh, we now see negative 19 here, which means that the device driver has read back the value negative 19 from uh, the device itself. The uh, device simulator is pretty simple, and currently it doesn't allow you to directly set the volume over here via the slider. So let's pick another one that it will let you set, which is the source. And we see over here that the source is showing DVD and it's also showing DVD in our driver here. So if we go over here and drop down the, the menu and the select media, and now we will see that the driver has now seen that change and it's updated the field to reflect that uh, the current value of this field is media. And that's basically you know, how it works. Uh, almost everything that you do within CQC in some way is going to involve getting the values of a field for display purposes for reacting to in some way or to set them to make the device do what you want. In some cases, um, you can have, for more complex devices, you can have a field called, say, command that you can just send it a string of a text, which it will parse out and do some more complex uh, command that couldn't be very realistically done by just setting a, a, a field value like power or volume or something because it involves taking multiple values and applying them all at once. But um, for the most part, everything happens just by reading and writing fields, and that's the most fundamental concept within uh, CQC. And if you understand that, that there are devices, that devices have fields, that the device and the field has an, have names, and the combination of a device name and a field name uniquely represents every addressable aspect of every device out there that CQC can control, and that each one of those has certain uh, data type and certain access requirements and potentially certain limitations on the values they can have. Everything else revolves around that. So just make sure that you fully uh, get your brain wrapped around that concept. And if you do, then we can move forward and everything will make a lot more sense to you as we go through the upcoming videos. And we'll leave this one here and move on. Thanks.